Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfulan. When I'm not worrying about the Cold War, I'm here at Castle Wolfulan reviewing movies. It's not quite Universal Horror Month, but you never need an excuse to review a classic Universal Horror movie, and this was the most highly requested from my fans. Creature from the Black Lagoon, released in 1954. The creature, or Gilman as he's known, is both an icon and an outlier in the Universal Monsters canon. Gilman is Universal's last iconic movie monster. His appearance has made him world famous. He was the universal monster that boomers grew up with and remember most fondly. But despite Gilman the monster being world famous, his actual films are probably the least appreciated by subsequent generations. There were only three creature movies, all released in the 50s, and any attempt to make more movies or remake the original movie have failed, making it difficult to reintroduce Gilman to a new generation, especially since Gilman is still copyrighted, so only Universal can bring the character back. The closest we've come to getting a new creature from the Black Lagoon movie is the Oscar-winning film The Shape of Water, which answered the question all of us have asked, what if the Gill Man actually got laid? Yeah, that was really the whole point of that movie getting made. Guillermo del Toro just really wanted to see the creature from the Black Lagoon fuck. The man's a genius. Anywho, like all of Universal's monsters, Gill Man is a reflection of his time. The gothic, classical monsters of the 30s and 40s had fallen out of favor in the 50s, and it hit them hard. Instead of Dracula sucking blood, he was sucking more. Morphine. The Lemleys had lost control of their family-owned production company, Universal, and this contributed further to the disappearance of the classic monsters they once shepherded into existence on the silver screen. The drive-ins were taking over, and the public wanted monsters steeped in science fiction. Aliens, giant ants, giant alien ants, creatures from far-off mysterious places, and Universal delivered with Creature from the Black Lagoon. But nearly 70 years later, does it still hold up like their earlier classics? Yes, but the question you should be asking is why do YouTubers ask so many rhetorical questions in their videos? Uh, anyway, here's my review of Creature from the Black Lagoon. From the start, Creature from the Black Lagoon gets surprisingly religious on us. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Whoa, buddy. Separation of church and monster. This is the planet Earth, newly born and cooling rapidly from a temperature of 6,000 degrees. The opening intro is kind of weird because it gives a breakdown of the creation of the world. That's a little more context than necessary, but uh, all right. In infinite variety, living things appear and change and reach the land. The film principally takes place in the Amazon, and for you younger viewers, this isn't the Amazon where you bought that speaker that spies on all of your conversations. No, before it burned down, this Amazon was a rainforest where all kinds of crazy critters lived, and if the Italians are to be believed, it was also brimming with cannibals. But who believes those pasta-eating grease monkeys? Surely not me. Creature from the Black Lagoon takes place in the Amazon, sure, but in reality, it was shot in Florida before the Disney Corporation had it destroyed to make way for that, uh, fun park or whatever. A scientist by the name of Dr. Maya makes a massive scientific discovery. W well, actually, the South American dudes he pushes out of the way discovered it, but they're gonna get killed soon, so whatever. They discover a fossilized amphibian-like hand in a rock formation. Well, either that or somebody didn't moisturize properly. I'm going to Morajo Bay, to the Institute. You two are to wait here in the camp. Dr. Maya, cosplaying as Colonel Sanders, enlists the help of his colleagues in California, Dr. David Reed and David's sexy girlfriend, Kay Lawrence. Yowza, hachi machi. I just may become an ichthyologist. You know, if the actress that played her was in 94 now and dead. Are you two married yet? No, no, David says we're together all the time anyway. Might as well save expenses. Dr. Reed and Kay agree to join Dr. Maya's expedition to the Amazon to try to find the rest of the fossilized creature that the hand belonged to, but they don't realize that back at the Amazon, there's a living version of that fossilized creature wandering about, and the creature's first victim is Emo Phillips. Oh, dear God, no! No! <laughs> Kay, Dr. Maya, and Dr. Reed are joined on their riverboat journey in the Amazon by Captain Lucas and two other docs by the names of Dr. Mark Williams and Dr. Edwin Thompson. Now, a big subplot of the film is a love triangle that forms between Kay, her BF, Dr. Reed, and their colleague, Dr. Williams, but I gotta admit that I can't fucking tell Dr. Reed and Dr. Williams apart most of the time. They look and sound almost identical, and it doesn't help that they wear headgear in many of their scenes. It's like they're fucking clones or something. It makes the romance aspect of this movie completely incoherent to me. About Mark. 
Uh, what about him? Try to understand. I feel like the dudes needed to wear name tags in all of their scenes. It says something about the lack of chemistry Julie Adams has with either of these dudes, where I can't tell if she's supposed to be playing a scene with her boyfriend or just some dude who's really into her, creating romantic tension. Every scene Kay has with one of these dudes feels tense. I don't know why she would want to date either of them. Oh! This isn't a romance movie, though. Admittedly, the poster might just fool you. It's a monster movie, and when the expedition discovers the corpse of one of Dr. Maya's assistants at the research site, they're initially spooked, but they figure he must have been killed by a jaguar. I think maybe jaguar. Jaguar's claws. They rip like this. Yeah, a murderous jaguar is no big deal, especially when you're armed only with a spear gun. They can handle themselves. After a montage of digging, the doctors are about to call it quits. Even Dr. Maya, who had these motherfuckers come all this way to begin with. Except for Dr. Reed, who uses his science brain to determine that the rest of the fossil descended down the river, ending in a lagoon, called by the locals the Black Lagoon. And when they enter this Black Lagoon, they find themselves stalked by a creature lurking within its water. Waters, a creature from the Black Lagoon, if you will. And you are right, David. Some of the limestone deposit where I found the fossil is on the bottom of this lagoon. Creature from the Black Lagoon's tale is the classic King Kong slash Beauty and the Beast narrative. An expedition sets off in uncharted waters and it encounters a monster who falls for the lone woman aboard the ship. It's quite a bit like King Kong, just with a human-sized monster. The Gill Man will kill individuals he believes to be invading his territory, but when there's a huge group, he's initially very cautious, yet he's willing to risk it all as soon as he sees Julie Adams in that revealing swimsuit, which is the creature's downfall, wanting to get laid. That's the message with a lot of these horror flicks. If you're a monster and try to get laid, you're probably gonna die. It's sort of the opposite of the Friday the 13th formula. Hey, wait a second. It is that camel toe? Tying into the Beauty and the Beast motif, well, the iconic design of the creature was conceived by a woman, Millicent Patrick, who was so photogenic that her creation of the Gill Man was initially a part of the marketing of the film. But, like usual, a dude was upset that he didn't get the credit, in this case Bud Westmore, head of Universal's makeup department, so he downplayed Patrick's role in the creation of Gill Man and stole the credit for himself. It's a classic Bill Finger and Bob Kane situation, but in the last 20 years, Millicent Patrick is finally being recognized, and now, like Bob Kane, Bud Westmore is only remembered as being an asshole who stole credit. The appearance of the Gill Man is striking. It looks genuinely creepy, but it doesn't look like a lot of monsters that are engineered specifically just to look scary. He maintains the look of a natural creature with practical characteristics, a more scientific departure from the supernatural monsters that dominated the horror genre of the 30s. The Gill Man simply answers in 1950s terms what a fish would look like if it evolved to have the shape of a human, and it just happens to look scary without losing the animal-like qualities or being being overtly monstrous, or worse, too human looking. I love Monster Squad, but I do feel like they shifted the Gill Man's design too far into being more obviously monstrous, and it lost the recognizable, lovable qualities of Gill Man's look. I feel like a pitfall a modern creature from the Black Lagoon movie would potentially fall in would be making the Gill Man too much of a monster or way too human, losing the natural, animalistic qualities that make the suit in the original work. You have to strike the right balance, and Millicent Patrick nailed it with this movie's look for Gill Man. The Gill Man on land was portrayed by Ben Chapman, but more notable is the actor who portrayed Gill Man in the water, Rico Browning. The underwater photography in the film is its greatest strength, and Browning's portrayal of the creature, its graceful, effortless movements, sells the Gill Man as a genuine underwater organism. The fact that the suit was constructed to allow such natural movement underwater is incredible, especially since so many monster suits in the 50s were moving awkwardly on land. And despite usually being shown in 2D, Creature from the Black Lagoon was actually shot in 3D during the 3D craze of the early 50s, but it came out at the tail end of 3D's popularity at the time. So ironically, most people saw it flat. The 3D was actually supposedly quite striking for this movie when it was released in theaters, especially the underwater scenes. But unfortunately, most projectionists at the time didn't know how to properly screen 3D films, so the picture would end up being misaligned, which was a contributor 
contributing factor in 3D's fading popularity. People weren't seeing the 3D image at all or the way it was meant to be seen. 3D versions of the film have been released on home video but suffer from misalignment of the 3D image unfortunately, so you can't really see this film how it was originally intended to be seen in theaters. Creature from the Black Lagoon is great because of the titular creature, but the movie focuses much attention on the human characters, though it's admittedly hard to care about them. They're treated on the surface as the protagonists, but they really are the villains of the movie. The humans enter the Black Lagoon, hunting, shooting at the creature, poisoning his water, and eventually trying to subdue him. They won't believe it back home, none of them. I wouldn't have believed it myself. That's why we've got to take him. I mean, sure, Gilman goes after the girl he's smitten over, but the dude is lonely, and she and the others shouldn't have been in the lagoon to begin with, relentlessly pursuing the Gilman, who would have lived in peaceful isolation otherwise. The film carries an ecological message, either intended or not, but essentially the humans of the story are harbingers of doom. The creature knows that they're a threat to his ecosystem, and that his days of freedom are numbered. The pursuit of any scientific discovery carries with it the very real danger of potentially destroying the thing you sought to discover. Much like King Kong, then, Creature from the Black Lagoon turns out to be a tragedy in the end. We must have the proof. The creature makes his violent escape, brutalizing Dr. Thompson and killing the predatory Dr. Williams, but that's not a big deal since Williams looks exactly the same as Dr. Reed. It's like the guy never died. <laughs> The creature realizes, though, that even if the crew of the Rita leave the lagoon, more humans will return in pursuit of him. So the creature aims to trap the ship in his waters and abduct Kay, so he can finally have some companionship and kill whoever tries to enter his secluded underwater cavern, and at first the plan seems to work, but somehow Dr. Maya and Captain Lucas made it to the creature's underwater lair with guns and shoot at the creature. I guess Gilman forgot there was a really convenient exit in the cave that anyone could get to, and the creature knowing that he's dying, wanders back to his beloved lagoon to a watery grave below. Of course, there were two more sequels where he comes back, but uh, let's pretend those didn't happen. Creature from the Black Lagoon is a classic, one of Universal's best monster movies, but it doesn't hold the same appeal to me as the earlier monster movies just because it doesn't quite have enough of the monster to my liking. Still, Creature from the Black Lagoon is the gold standard of 50s monster movies and influenced so many subsequent monster movies over the years. It's essential viewing to know your movie monster history. I give Creature from the Black Lagoon a Dr read out of Dr. Williams. I hope Guillermo del Toro makes more monster movies where the monsters fuck. Show us Frankenstein and his bride doing the nasty already. Hell yeah. If you liked this video, like it, and if you loved it, click the subscribe and bell buttons for more vids. I'd also like to thank these fine folks pledged my shout-out tier on Patreon for all their kind support. Videos like this wouldn't be possible without all their help. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Dr. Wolfiel is signing out.